night of 2014. We ought to thank God from where he brought us from, from January the 1st, 2014 to December 31st, 2014. Let's come on the altar tonight. Why don't you get your families and let's just come down on the altar tonight and pray. So tonight is Holy Ghost have your way. Is that all right? Come on from wherever you are. We get ready to pray. Come on. you taught us. Look on us tonight, Lord. Thank you for all year long. Thank you for the good and thank you for the bad. Thank you for being merciful. Thank you for being kind. Thank you for being just. Thank you for being marvelous. Thank you for being magnificent. You've been good to us. In spite of what we've been through, we want to thank you now. 
we want to thank you now. Thank you for another touch. Thank you for another touch. Look on our young people. Touch them right now. Put a hedge of protection around them. And we thank you now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If we had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't thank you enough. But with this one tongue we have, we want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for how you brought us. Thank you. You brought us through. You brought us over. And we want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. No hurt, harm, and danger came to our door. And we want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For a roof over our head. Clothes on our back. Food in the pantry. Thank you, Lord. Somebody is sleeping under the bridge. and said the Lord's going to do it again. Say so don't worry about what you lost. Say so he's going to give it back to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You ought to lift your hand up and say thank you.
the time Yeah. 
keeping me when the devil wanted to destroy me. Thank you for keeping me.
death's door, but the Lord delivered you. You took some blows, you had some issues, but God brought you out. Come on, tell it. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord. The devil thought he had me, but God delivered me. I made it. I made it. I was in the hospital, but I'm here now. I was sick, but I am well. I did cry, but now I'm laughing. Come on, tell somebody. You don't know.
H I N K. Then I T H A N K. It don't take much. I just need to think.
If a promise is a promise, then Moses goes through all of the stuff that he went through in his life to bring him to that one moment at that bush. Well. The sermon's almost over. You got to get this. He was born when the king was killing male children. That's right. That's right. Come on now. That's right. But a promise. A promise. Is a promise. Even when your enemy is trying to kill you, the promise that God has for you will cause, watch this, somebody to intervene so the very plan of the enemy will fail because it ran up against the promise of God. So the mama, you, you know the story, I don't have to, the mama puts him in the little basket. Because she floated him on. She floated him on the waters of a promise. Not knowing what would happen. And she had her daughter watching the promise float. Right to a provision. That happened to be in the king's house. Because when God promises. He will accompany his promise with provision. That's why he keeps making a way for us. When it seems like there is no way. When we're ready to quit, God says my promise has not been fulfilled. She floats him on the waters of a promise and the baby runs into provision. 
Then they raised Moses as an Egyptian. It was necessary because that promise that went to provision needed preparation. All right. Watch out. I see where you're going. And so because it, he was prepared with the best education, he understood both cultures. Because the promise of God was that in, when Israel is in Egypt 400 years, I'm going to send them a deliverer. And so the deliverer is now the promise manifested with provision made and watch this, preparation in the king's house. But then there comes the time that preparation needs to execute the plan. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So the plan is executed and Moses has to go. But he goes through a process. God, I hear you. Our problem is that when we go through the process, we're more concerned about what we're going through then focus on the promise. Yeah. And it is the process that validates the promise. Yeah. Can I tell you something? If there was not a promise on your life, you wouldn't have gone through the hell you went through in 2014. Yeah. The frustrations of the enemy trying to get you only to discourage you to stop believing the promise. But I'm here to tell you that a promise is a promise. Come here, Abraham. Even though he comes out of Ur and he goes to Haran and then he finally follows God and God tells him, I promise you that you're going to have an heir. He has no evidence that the promise is legitimate. So he decides that he is going to make his own way. But he didn't make his way. He made a mess. He took Hagar and created Ishmael. But he created a mess when God still had a promise. Can I encourage somebody tonight that even though you made a mess out of some stuff, a promise is still a promise. God is going to take your mess and clean it up because you got to get to the promise that he's placed on your life. Somebody ought to shake somebody and say, I made a mess of some stuff. But, uh, but a promise is a promise. I'm not going to be discouraged by what I go through because there's a promise on my life. And watch this, going through only validates that God has already been here and he's already left provision for me to get through anything I'm going through. That's why I'm here tonight because if the enemy had his way, none of us would be here thanking God. But there's a promise on your life. There's a promise on your destiny. God is not done with you. So, Talks up. promise has a, a process. Here is where you have to transition. Because it's not about what God's going to do. It's what you're not doing. Our inability to transition in the midst of the promise is our failure to ever receive the promise. Transition is really the act of moving from one place or one phase to another. And yet we are so, we're so looking forward to getting to the promise. We want to get to the end that we won't allow God to develop us in the midst of it. And so we're praying to God to deliver us. We want God to get us out of our trouble and get us out of this. God, we're done praying, Lord, deliver me. You know what our new prayer is? Lord, transition me. Somebody didn't get it. Because until you can master transition, you will never celebrate change. Moses went through everything he went through to bring him to a burning bush. So can I say this to you tonight? Don't miss God. Don't miss this moment that God has brought you to because everything that has happened in your life up to this moment has been God 
transitioning you. And the things that you have not secured, it's only because you haven't mastered transition. We've mastered complaint. We've mastered broken focus. We've mastered doing other things, but we have not mastered transition. And if I'm really going to get where God wants me to go, I've got to allow God to teach me how to maneuver, how to stand, how to wait, how to bless him, how to cry, how to believe, how to go forward, even when everything is against you. 2015 has got to be the year of transition, of greater transition. You're, you're going to always be in a place. But guess what? The problem with us is that we've stopped. We gave up on God. God has never given up on us. And we've become so frustrated because life has lifed us. And we've been so distracted by everything else that's going on. Even tonight, I'm looking at some of you, and your mind is not even here. You know why? Because we are filled with distractions. There are so many other things that we're thinking about that, that, that literally capture our emotion. And where your emotion is, guess what? That's where your attention is. You're thinking about whatever you're thinking about. And what's happening is God is still saying, can I get your attention? The whole burning bush thing was just to get his attention so that he could give him his assignment. And Moses could not afford to miss the burning bush because everything God had done in his life was for that moment. Everybody keeps talking about the Red Sea. But the Red Sea would have never opened had Moses never turned aside. That's right. That's right. God has already provided everything you need to be successful tomorrow. See, only we gather and celebrate that it's watch night and then tomorrow is a new year. But in my prayer time, I was telling the Lord, um, I know it's watch night, but you don't know it's watch night. Well, 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 well. Are y'all with me? I'm with you. I'm with you. It's watch night, but God don't know it. No. It's just watch night for us. Because it is no watch night for him because he's eternal. He doesn't have time. God ain't on no calendar. God don't flip no page and say, okay, I think. No, no. God has already discussed and concluded that he's going to bless you. But he is going to bless you in his time and not on your calendar. So when you get frustrated that it's not happening fast enough and the things aren't coming together the way you want them to come together, I want to remind you that God doesn't have your calendar on his desk. And if you will just trust that your name is on his desk. Lord, you ain't got to have a calendar with, but just have my name on your desk. And if I know my name is on your desk, then I will throw away my calendar. And every time the devil says to me, see, the Lord didn't show up. I'm just going to remind him that God doesn't have my calendar. He's got my, come on, he's got my name. And a promise is a promise. I want you to be encouraged tonight. I want you to walk into 2015 not focused on the process, but embracing and celebrating the promise. Because God's got some stuff to do in you yet. Even when Moses went to the burning bush, God still had to deal with him. When he sent them down, come on here, when he sent them down to Pharaoh, can I give you this last piece? He sends them, he's talking to God. I wasn't intending to preach this, but I'm just giving it to you. Um, he's talking to God, and he says, when I go, Man, Elder Humphreys is in um, preaching uh, in Bowden tonight, and I just thought about him because I really need him to jump off that seat and run down the aisle. <laughs> No, because I'm telling you, this thing leaps in my spirit. He says, you promised that you would deliver your people. God says, Moses, you're it. Moses says, when I go to Pharaoh, transition. Y'all ready for this? 
when I go to Pharaoh and tell them that the God of the Hebrews has said, let my people go. And they ask me your name. Elder Hamilton, man, watch this. When they ask me, what's your name? What will I tell them? He says, tell, give them my transitional name. Give them the name that transitions into any and everything that they will ever need. Give them this name because I don't, don't give them Jehovah Jireh. God could have said that. But he wasn't really just going to provide. He, he could have gave him Jehovah Nisi. He, he could have said, I'm just going to be a banner. I'm going to be a covering. But tell him Jehovah Nisi said it. Yes, no, he kept that name. Yeah. God was strategic when he said, tell him I am. I just need some Bible readers to get with me right now. Church folk ain't getting this. But just tell him I am. Because a promise is a promise. And in the process of the promise, I might have to be something else to get them to the promise. So I'm not going to lock my name in and say, tell them that the mighty God, the holy one, El, El Shaddai, at the, no, don't give them none of that. Just tell them my transitional name. Because I might have to transform some stuff. I might have to be a burning bush today, and I might have to be a sea opener tomorrow. I might have to be a catering service in the desert. So just tell them. Only God, watch this, can order takeout in the desert. And then deliver with no charge. Oh, you know, that was some good preaching. Y'all just love Bread in the morning. And when they get tired of bread, they say, we want some meat. He sends quail by. But only God can cater in the desert and deliver. Tell them I am. That I am. What does that mean for you in 2015? As I will transition in areas of prayer, in areas of faith, and when I run up against challenges, I'm going to tell my challenge that the I am God has sent me. And because I am that I am, what does that mean for you? You can leave here with no worries because the I am that I am has already being what he needs to be to get you from your process to your promise. Are we here tonight? 2015 has got to be the year that you don't walk with your head down. Come on. That you walk in the confidence of God. 2015's got to be, come on, y'all, it's got to be your year that the stuff that hasn't been working works. And let me tell you how it's going to work with three simple principles. Mother um, Gloria Epinger released a prophetic word maybe two years ago. And she said, the Lord said to go forward, to stay focused, and avoid distractions. That thing has stayed with me so much that it has literally birthed the theme of our ministry year for 2015, and that's greater transition. How am I going to transition? I'm going to stay, I'm going to keep moving forward. And then I'm going to stay focused. What am I going to stay focused on? Not the, not the process, but the promise. And you're going to stay focused on not being so distracted by what's going on in your life that you let go of what God has told you. Well, Are we here? Yes, sir. Because he watches over his word to perform it. So what's, what's, what's our critical challenge? For some, it's, it's finance. Some will say, Pastor, you, you just don't know that I just barely made it through. And I will say, you're right. I will say that there has been a tough downturn in the economy. It seems like it's coming back, but it's not coming back fast enough for the people who need it the most. That's right. But the economy never promised you 
Say that, say that. Say that. That's good. Never promised you that it would take care of you. That's right. All right. Come on, come on. The scripture says, I will lift up mine eyes to the hill. Unto the what? Hill. Whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. So it's the Lord that has to create an economy. That's right. Just for you. Yes, sir. So that's why you can say, you barely made it, but I will tell you, you made it. You made it. See, you're focused on barely and not thanking God for made it. That's it. That's because it. the same God that created the made it yes, sir. is not thinking about the barely. No, sir. And the barely is only on you because you're focused on it instead of the thank you. That's it. Well, all right. 2015 can't be about your sad song. No, sir. It's really got to be about God's provision. Yes. That every time I turn around, God keeps blessing me. Yes. Every time and every time a door closes, God opens another one. Every time, watch this, I get squeezed out of this, there's a way made for me over here. And so your attitude has got to change about what's happening to you. And watch this, focus on what God is doing for you. It's really not about you. And so God is going to allow things to happen so that you can notice him and not miss your moment. Not miss your burning bush. Because how would you ever know that he's a provider unless you had lack? I'm going to let y'all go, but come on, let's, let's just talk for a moment so that we go into a new year with a transitioned mind that I'm not going to focus on what's wrong. I'm going to keep seeing God doing great things for me. I'm going to see God take me from a little to a lot. I'm going to see God transition me from brokenness to joy. Some of us are just broken. And no matter, you are so broken that you will never praise God for anything. You, are, you need to transition out of your brokenness. And you need to ask the Lord to heal every part of you that's hurting. So that you can appreciate what God is doing in your life. The saints of God ought to be happy people. No, 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 no. You, I, I, like, I'm not playing. I'm serious. I'm not suggesting that you have to be full of energy like some of us. It would help. No, you know why it would help? Because if I'm excited about God and you're excited about God, we create this environment, this energy that's excited about God, and God is in the midst of that. And so here's the other reason. You have no need. My, my. Because a promise, is a promise. You're scratching your head. Some people looked at me like, what are you talking about? You have no need. <laughs> you say, unpack that fast. You have no need. Come on. Who said that? Because a promise is a promise. What you don't have is the understanding of God. I like it when it's quiet. Oh yeah. One more time. You have no need. No need. Because a promise is a promise. So what's the promise? My God shall supply. Oh, 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 oh. So maybe you are only depressed about your wants. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Maybe you are distracted by your wants. Well, because watch this, and that's connected to your pride. Yeah. That's connected to your ego. All right. That's connected to your control. Because his promise was he's going to supply all your what? Needs. No, he didn't say needs, so don't put the S on. No S. No S. Go back and look at the text. There's no S on that. And you know black people, we put S on everything. What's his name? My name is William. Williams. 
we, we, we just have that culture. We just put S on the, on the back of everything. The text says that I will supply your what? Need. Your need is the category of everything that is necessary for your life, for you to be sustained, and for his promise to be manifested. You say, I got this need and that need. I need my car note paid. I need the insurance. I need a better job. No, he said he would supply your he would supply what? All your need according to his riches and where? So it's suggesting that God has got more resources in glory than you have need on earth. I said God's got more resources in glory than you got need on earth. So that's why we ought to look at each other strange when believers are acting like beggars. All right. All right. Because he's going to supply all our need. So then, Pastor, what's the problem? I'm glad you asked. The problem is that you haven't, tran you haven't mastered transitioning stewardship. You have wasted what he has given you on your wants yes, and you have you have misappropriated his resources to take care of you based upon your own need and your own greed oh, yeah. well, that now all of a sudden you run back to him to say I need no what you need to do is master transition yeah. you need to learn how to save money yeah. you need to reduce watch this your highfalutin champagne dreams on a beer income. Because you can't, watch this. God supplies everything you need and he gives it to you expecting you to follow his plan. When we disobey God, then we are left to our own rebuke. That's not the Lord is against you. You're against you. Is this too deep? Y'all want me to go back to the, the, the other stuff? Because if a promise is a promise, it's not God's issue. God has done everything he said he's going to do. It is what you and I are not doing in trusting him to do and to perform what he said. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. One more time. Yeah, I know, I'm, I'm done. He's got more resources in glory than you got need on earth. Because a promise. And Jimmy, here's the deal. God can't lie. I, and the reason why I don't want to hoop and get you all excited is because that's been our problem. We've been dancing emotionally over stuff, and then we don't know how to transition into change. We get right back into that same stuff. This is God has already done everything he's going to do. See, if I told you all this, I'm going to tell you, you would just make an appointment if you need to talk. But God has done everything he's going to do. Make an appointment. <laughs> Y'all got to read the Bible. God is done. Everything he's going to do. Done. It's over. Well, I need the Lord to do this. He's already done. Because you wouldn't be here if he hadn't done it. Y'all ready? Because when he made man, he had already done it. Everything man would need, even after man fell. God had already made provision. Well, so everything God's going to do, he's already done. And the only thing he's telling you to do is walk in what he's done. All right. Come on. Come on. It's, going to, it's going to take about 45 seconds. Walk in what he's done. God has already provided for you. I'm going to tell you what we said to the, to the earlier service. If we call today's what? Wednesday? What's up? We call Wednesday Wednesday. God doesn't call Wednesday Wednesday. Because God doesn't have a calendar. 
So God was already here yesterday. My, my. My, my. Velma, he was already here yesterday because he knew you would come in to today. And he knew that you had a need today, but he left the provision yesterday when he was here. So when you came into today, he's already into tomorrow. And when you go into tomorrow, he's into the next day. So every time you get up, you win. Because God has already made a provision for you. So now look at somebody and tell them, fix your face. It's done. Come on, tell them, fix your face. It's done. Fix your face. It's done. Stop crying. It's done. God has already, he's already been here. So watch this. If God has already been in my today and he was here yesterday, then the only thing I need to do today is look for what he left yesterday. Look for what God left. I said, look for what God left. Because he's already left provision. Give us this day. Our day. what? Bread. Provision. That's what he says. God has already done it. So technically in this church, there should be no more complaints. Now let me tell you the people who are only, let me tell you the complainers. You ready for them? The non-believers. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's the only people complaining. I ain't got enough. Oh. That's a non-believer. Because you don't understand a promise is a promise. You don't understand the stewardship that God requires of you because he's already left everything you need. Am I preaching the Bible? No, no, it's, this is the Bible. So what did Paul mean when he said, my God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory? A promise is a promise. And God has promised that to you. Maybe we have learned to live with our complaints so long that we don't know what it feels like to live free. My, my. My, we've been bound so long. We, we've been broken so long. We've been in this rut so long that we're not comfortable walking in freedom. That's rich. Because we still think we got something to do. God has already done the work. Has that word helped you tonight? Yes, no, has it helped you tonight? Yes, so this is what you got to do. And, and, and let me culturally apologize to whatever expectation you have for watching. It. But when you grow in the word, you really get away from a lot of emotionalism. <laughs> because after you get, that's why I'm glad we shout and dance before the word and get it in. I'm going to roll with you. I'm going to slide. Get it in. No, I'm serious. We're going to dance. We're going to buck. But when it comes to the word of God, if you walk out of here and don't have an understanding that I don't have to be pressured by life because God promised me that he was going to take care of me. Now, that doesn't mean I have nothing to do. Because we still have to steward the gift that God has given yes, us. Sir. Yes, sir. Give, me, give me 30 seconds on this. All the investment that God has made in you, you got to ask yourself this. Is he getting a return on that investment? My, my. Everything that God has placed in you, every gift that you have, every amazing, creative skill that the Lord has given you, Every wonderful idea, every business, every book, ev everything that God has literally poured into you, is he getting his return? Or are you sitting on his investment and asking him for more resources when he's giving you everything you need? Because this is where we are, y'all. We can dance and we're going to pray. The choir's going to sing and we're going to pray into the new year and we're going to receive an offering next. Watch this. But if we leave here and go into 2015 and we're doing the same thing we did in 2014, then what's the point of all of this? 
I said to the earlier service that I have an iPhone 4S. You know, since I got the 4S, the iPhone 5 came out. Six. Six. Wait, wasn't it? Wasn't there an iPhone 5S too? Yes. Yeah, six, the five. Galaxy, the Notebook, the 6, six. and then the 6 Plus. Six plus. But Tony, I got an iPhone 4S. So there are people around me that are sporting their iPhone 6 Plus. They're sporting their tablets. You know. They're sporting all of their wonderful technology. And they're saying to me, Sister Rhea, that I need to upgrade. And so I was feeling a little pressure <laughs> because people will pressure you. Yes, they will. That's right. Can, can I just, people will pressure you. They will pressure you to buy a car you can't afford. That's right. That's right. They will pressure you to buy shoes that, watch this, they can't afford. That's right. That's right. But they just want you to have an image. So, Elder Willard, my iPhone 4S is small. That iPhone 6 is big. When I pull out my iPhone 4S, people give me the side eye. Because they're trying to figure out, what is a dude like you doing with the I You don't even have the 5. That's right. That's right. So now all of a sudden, watch this, they judge me to say something is wrong with me because well. I can't keep up with the technology. Well. <laughs> so my response is, y'all ready for this? That I don't want an upgrade that I can't get any benefit from. I know that's right. Because even if I sport the iPhone 6 Plus, I still have the skill of the iPhone 4S. Yes, and I haven't maximized the 4S yet. I don't know what that phone does now. So I'm determined to, uh, to upgrade my skill first before I upgrade without a benefit. If you can laugh at me for my iPhone 4S, and because you sporting the iPhone 6 Plus or whatever your mobile device may be, then I'm going to laugh at you that you say you're a believer and you got an upgrade by the name of Jesus Christ, but you have no benefit from your upgrade. You say you know God and you act like this? You say that Jesus Christ lives in you and you complain like this? Yes, sir. You say that the God of glory, the hook of Messiah, that he coming on a Kawasaki, yes. that he riding on a Honda, you speak in all these tongues. You hear all these voices and you represent the great universal God and there's no benefit to that relationship that's why the world won't follow you because they see you sporting something that you have no skill for. Skill is and they shall lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. Believers don't talk about healing. We absolutely started. We execute healing in the name of Jesus Christ. We Absolutely understand the benefit yes. of the upgrade. Yes. We're not walking around showing Jesus the iPhone 6 Plus. Come on. But we only got the skill of a Motorola flip phone. <laughs> All right. All right. You got some flip phone believers that don't have enough memory, they don't have enough access, they have no, They can't connect to an internet, they can't download a picture, they can't text. 
Because, watch this, there's a promise for the upgrade, but there's not the skill to do it. I think I'm done. <laughs> Beloved, don't go into 2015 sporting something that you have no skill in. Get right with God. No, get right with God. And when you get right with God, your attitude changes. There's no, I'm sorry, but you can't be a believer and be mean as the devil. I know that's right. I know you that's cannot right. be a believer and be unforgiving. You cannot be a believer and hold grudges. That's right. That's right. You cannot be a believer and not be reconciled to your brother and sister. All right. You got an upgrade with no benefit but I'm here to tell you that a promise is a promise don't let your process scare you stay focused on your promise we believe God tonight we're going to pray in a minute come on choir let's minister in song no can I do the offering then y'all minister and then we'll pray and then we're going home this is what I need you to do you that can and will if you will share a $20 gift tonight we'd be so appreciative Oh, thank you. I'm so glad we got great people to keep me on task. The ushers before, we're going to give you uh, offering envelopes if you need them. If we missed you on Sunday for your tithe, we want to make sure that we give you the opportunity to bless the Lord on this last day of the year. The ushers have three items that we're going to give you. Well, two items that we're going to give you. The third item you have to request. I want to tell you that tomorrow is January 1st and it's the beginning of our faith focus. Our faith focus for you that, and I wanna share with you that if you would like the faith focus emailed to you, that is a real simple process. We're emailing now probably um, a, a large number of faith focuses around the country. You can simply email info at gc-kojic.com. It's right here on your uh, faith focus. And just simply say, I would like to receive the electronic version of the faith focus. That way it'll come to you in a PDF and you can download it in your phone, your mobile device, and you can have this daily, this, da this monthly devotional right on your device. In this faith focus, and the reason why we wanna make sure we put it in your hand is because it is the, the Daniel fast. This church will engage in 21 days of fasting and praying beginning on January 4th. All of the guidelines for the fast are in this pamphlet. I want to say, as I said in the earlier service, to the older saints, y'all know how to fast. I'm not even suggesting uh, to give you something, but um, my job is to minister to a generation that knows not Jesus. Amen. And to try to, and make sure that we give them the structure to grow in the things of the Lord. Yeah. And so um, the, we have two tracks. The first track is the actual Daniel fast. Beginning January 4th through the, that, that 21 days, it's fruits and vegetables and water. That's it. That was the Daniel fast. That's it. If you want to do the Daniel fast, that's what it was. That's just straight out the Bible. If that is not, if you're not used to fasting, we have another track for you. And you'll see it on your uh, faith focus. Week one, there's no sweets, no caffeine, no fried food. Then we build on that. That Week two, there's no sweets, no caffeine, no fried food, and no meat. And then week three... There's no sweets, no caffeine, no fried food, no meat, and no starches. We build. Now, guess what? Somebody's saying, oh, Lord. <laughs> you get what I'm talking about? Because you haven't transitioned. That's right. You're looking at what you got to give up instead of what you're going to get. That's right. And here's what we want you to do. We just want you to do your best. How many, can you be honest with me if you just want, want to participate by raising your hands? How many people have never really gone on a fast? You really, I mean, you really never went through a fast. That's where, raise your hands high because I want people to see that this, yeah, you just haven't done it. What I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to do your very best. You may not make 21 days, but I really want you to try. And, and then I want you to see and ask yourself why you didn't make it. 
Why did you give up? And then that's where you know what to pray about. I gave up because I'm just impatient. I gave up because I don't like this. I gave up because I just don't like change. And anybody will tell me what to eat. Okay, so is that a pride issue? Sound like it to me. That sounds like a flesh problem. Because it suggests then, watch this. I gave up because I really wanted my, my food. So if you can't say no to a double bacon cheeseburger, You know what? I just live this thing like in, in real terms. If I can't say no to a double bacon cheeseburger, then I'm gonna have a hard time saying no to the devil. You can't rebuke a demon if you can't say no to a bacon double cheeseburger. It just tells us where we're at. The second thing we're going to give you is the church calendar. And so this calendar has all of the church's activities for 2015 from tonight to next year this time. And so we, we've worked very hard to make sure that you are informed and that you have everything. What we're asking the ushers to do is I want you to request this book because this is not for everyone. Please listen to me. Please listen to me. The 90-Day Greater Transition Challenge begins tomorrow. And it is 90 days of consistency. We've placed in here a journal for you that is accompanied with the faith focus. And it's asking you some questions about your starting points, your thoughts on this challenge. Because this is about how do we get a church to follow through and be consistent in the things of God. Not a church that talks holiness and talks biblical scholarship but doesn't practice it, that talks love, but does not practice it. We, we've got to now put, this is rubber to the road. So 2015, so you want the biblical numerology stuff? Yeah, 2014 was the year of double, double, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Well, 2015 is the year of rest. That's what it is. It's about consistency. Who would you be if you stayed consistent in one area of your life? All right. Consistent in saving money. Consistent in eating right. Consistent in thinking right. Consistent in loving. Consistent in being generous. Who would you be if you were just consistent? You know what, what type of choir we would have if everybody was consistent? Amen. No, I'm, I'm just looking at y'all. Y'all bomb. But my point is, you know who we could be? If we could count on everybody consistently? You know what kind of preaching staff we could have if we were all consistent? Yes. Do you know what kind of deacon staff we, I'm just, it's, I'm just ushers. Do you know what kind of evangelism we could do if we were just consistent? Amen. So then we come and celebrate our inconsistency and say that 50, 60% is good enough. I want you to be so powerful in your life. And you can do that by daily reading the word of God. So the, what we're passing out right now is the calendar for you to have it. Only take this if you want to join the challenge. If you've been given this and you didn't request it, hold it up and the usher will come and receive it. And I only mean that because we're not looking to pressure anybody. We want you to do this for you. And so what is it, Pastor? It's I want you to pray every day. Every day. So we've given you options. There's the 7 o'clock prayer call. How many people have joined, have been on the prayer call at least once? All right. There's the 7 o'clock prayer call. There is 9 a.m. prayer Monday through Friday here. There's, there is noonday prayer Tuesdays and Fridays here. And for the month of January, during WOW, we will be conducting a prayer clinic. Our goal for January is push. Ask somebody, are you ready to push? This push is an acronym for praying until something happens. When you come on Sundays for this entire month, please bring your prayer shawls because we're going to just be praying. We're going to pray and we're going to pray and we're going to believe God and we're going to keep pushing in prayer until we learn how to transition in our lives.
And so I'm sorry, it's not going to be the quick fix. It's not going to be the feel good. It's going to be the hard work of pursuing God. And this challenge is asking you to fast on Tuesdays and Fridays. Well, Pastor, that ain't no challenge. Yes, it is. You know why it's a challenge? Because we want you to do it consistently for 90 days. We want young people, young adults, to flip your plate so that you can understand the value. Now watch this. It may not be you with the food. You may have to fast from Facebook. Uh-oh. 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 Fast from Twitter. Come on here. Fast from Instagram, Pinterest. Because social media is not social. It makes you a recluse. You don't talk to people. You got 3,000, 5,000, 10,000 friends, and you don't know these people. And can I just say this while I'm here? Greater community, do not get on Facebook and tell your business. What is wrong with y'all? Nobody needs to know that about you. You got to fast from social media. You got to say, you know what, January, I'm shutting it down. Because you shouldn't be so dependent upon needing to express, unless it's ministry. If if you're going to go ahead and use it for ministry, that's fine. But we don't need to know what color socks you're wearing today. That's right. What you have for breakfast? You sitting home bored. Sometimes I'll be thinking, what is wrong with these people? You want to keep a sense of privacy. Hey, no, it's, it is good teaching. That's all I got to do. You, you want to maintain a, a little mystique. You don't want everybody knowing everything about you. Are we here? Pray for me because I'm going out of town. I'm going to be gone for 17 days. And people know where you live. And when you gone, they coming. So when you get back, if you want the challenge, ask one of the ushers, it's your journal. If you do not want it, it is okay. You are not being forced to take it. And can I just say this? Don't feel pressure. If somebody's sitting next to you and they have one and you don't have one, be okay with that. We're not pregnant. And fasting, can I say this? There are no fasting police. Touch your neighbor and say, you are not hired. (laughs) Fasting is personal. So don't go to dinner with somebody and, and you know, they fasting and then your friend ordering pork chops. Uh-oh. And then you look at them saying, I thought we, I, oh, you ain't fasting, huh? So now you being pharisaical. Oh, you know, we can tell who fasting and who ain't. That's none of your business. That's right. You sit there and eat your bean sprouts and mushrooms uh-huh. like they're eating, you know, right. We're not doing that, y'all. Don't do that. Because you don't know where people are. You don't know what they're struggling with. Okay, have we given everything out? Faith focus, 90 day challenge, calendar. Oh, the choir. Bro, y'all always get the short end of the stick. I'm gonna do something about that. I'm gonna do something. No, no, y'all, y'all are too faithful. Sorry about that. Let me apologize. Next time we'll just set aside stuff for y'all. Hallelujah. It, it ain't tonight, though. <laughs> if you have your offering, will you stand to your feet? Face the outer walls. Follow the direction of the ushers. The choir is going to lead us in song. We're going to worship. And then we're going to pray the old year out and the new year in. Touch somebody and say, a promise is a promise. God has promised to take care of you. He's promised that if you give, he'll give back to you good measure. Father, we thank you for your promise kept. In Jesus' name, amen. Face the outer walls, follow the direction of the ushers. Bring the Lord an offering. Bring the Lord an offering.
hour is just about near. The hour is just about near. The ending of 2014 and almost the beginning of 2015. And we're all knowing that God is going to do great things with expectations. We trust him. We believe him. Yes. Let's look to God even now. Father God, we thank you for all of your many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. The dawning and the end, uh, ending of one year and the beginning of a new year. But when we look back on January 14th, when we evaluate the situation, we look and we see that you have been good to us. We see that you have been better to us than we could have been to ourselves. For some, you've healed our bodies. For others, you've delivered and for some, you've made a way. But for all of us, you've given us salvation. And we thank you on tonight. We celebrate your goodness. We celebrate your mercy. Oh Lord, have your way, Lord. We love you from the depths of our heart. We love you with all of our heart. And we realize we couldn't have made it without you. For when we look, we realize that it's in you that we live. It's in you that we move. And it's in you that we have our being. Lord, when we look back, we would have realized that we would have been a ship without a sail had it not been for you. But it's because of your goodness and your mercy. It's because of your love and your kindness. It's because of your grace. You've spared our lives. For some of us, we've been sick at the point of death. But you brought us back to this place. You've given us another chance and you've given us another opportunity. And for that, we want to say thank you. For that, we want to say thank you. We want to thank you for your love. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for all that you have done for us. You protected our children as they went back and forth to school. You protected us as we drove over the dangerous highways, seen and unseen danger. Lord, you've been so good to us. You've been good to us. We say thank you. We say thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for salvation. We could have been lost in our sins, but you spared our lives. And you've given us another opportunity. We thank you today. We thank you today. We thank you today. Tell him thank you. Thank him for a few moments. Thank him for his goodness. Thank him for his mercy. Thank him for his love. Thank him for his kindness. Thank him for a roof on our heads. Shoes on our feet. Clothes on our backs. Lord, you've been so good to us. We thank you. And we lift up our heads. We lift up our heads and we humble ourselves before you. And we look forward to the beginning and the dawning of a new year. With transition, we've made up in our minds that we're going to change from that place that we're common and used to. Lord, we thank you. Cause us to change, Lord. You said in your word, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are new. Help us to walk in the newness of life, the newness of life. Help us to serve you as never before. You said, 
Happy New Year. God bless you. God bless you.